Fresh Art International presents Art Talk, conversations about creativity in the 21st century. I'm Kathy Bird, Fresh Art producer, and today I'm in Tampa, Florida, speaking with New York-based video artist Janet Biggs. Her exhibition, No Limits, is on view at the Tampa Museum of Art through January 8, 2012. The exhibition just opened, and it's the first full survey of your career. Why do you give it the title No Limit? Actually, the title was a decision that was made both by myself and the director of the museum, who's the curator of the exhibition, Todd Smith. And we were talking a lot about where my work has gone and some of the themes that run through it. And I am constantly looking at redefining the self and limits that are imposed societally and then trying to push past those limits personally. You're talking about identity then. What kind of psychological and physical relationships interest you in your work? The early work, I was very focused on athletes, specifically athletes that are at the top of their field. I thought it was interesting to look at somebody who was so dedicated to being the very best that they could be that they really, you know, that, that single focus meant that they had to leave so many things behind. I was interested in whether they became more of who they were because of that dedication or whether they lost themselves and through that dedication. That work then, I, you know, the, the work uh, looking at identity kept me busy for many years. But then I became the guardian for my aunt who was uh, autistic and obsessive compulsive. And I think the next body of work and focus was really about understanding what happens when limits are not imposed on you by external forces, but by your, your very nature of being and how you exist within them, what the struggle is like, and in this case, uh, what happens when pharmacology becomes part of the equation. So I did a body of work about what happens with drugs that dampen experiences, uh, but allow people that, you know, this isn't an anti-drug statement. No, I understand that. Um, it's very much about people that, that need it to stay safe, to not become self-injurious, but it, at the same time, how much it changes identity. I think it's really important to think about the fact that when you're looking at these videos, they all have this high physical performance aspect that you're talking about. But I know when you make the work, you actually submit yourself to some of those demands, physical demands, of uh, the piece itself. So what project have you done that's demanded the most of you physically? I think um, two relatively recent pieces, one that was shot on the salt flats um, of Utah. It was brutal um, in that the salt is extremely corrosive, and it... You know, my eyes would swell shut every night from shooting because of the salt. It was 100, and, you know, 100 plus degrees every day. I was strapped into a, a little race car seat sticking out of the back of a pickup truck going 105 miles an hour trying to film people that were going 234 miles an hour. Um, so that certainly had some physical challenges, but I always, when I'm focusing on someone like in that case, Leslie Porterfield, who's uh, set three world speed records on a motorcycle. You know, what I do is living vicariously through her. So any risk that I assume is nothing compared to the person that I'm focusing on. And the same thing happened in the Arctic. So while it may look li like, you know, I, I'm an adventure traveler <laughs> um, in my work, it really is just a sort of byproduct of an obsession to focus on certain individuals that put themselves in an extreme environment, and then excel. That um, made me think about calling your art as an extreme sport itself. <laughs> and I noticed you're talking about extreme environments. What made you seek out the higher Arctic? I mean, you were in sub-zero, yeah. like, way sub-zero temperatures. <laughs> way sub-zero, <laughs> sometimes. Um, it's, it's a region I've been drawn to for years. I think I'm drawn to it for all the romantic reasons that many people are drawn to it. It's that even though there's no place that hasn't been mapped in the world, it still it holds that place in my brain that means discovery, that, that there is a potential for discovery or being someplace that no one's ever been, even though I intellectually know that that's really not the case anymore. Landscape became more and more a protagonist in the work and an equal weight with an individual that I was focusing on was that landscape that they were living within. The otherworldliness of the Arctic is just, how can you not? And the first piece that I made when I was up there, 
I, I so wanted to intellectualize the experience and to distance myself from it so that I could have an intellectual experience. And I didn't want to be David Casper Friedrich 2009. You know, I didn't know what that meant to make yet another beautiful shot of the Arctic. So I, I went with the purpose of saying, okay, distance, distance, distance. And once I was there, there was no way to distance. It was so incredible. So I completely gave over to the romantic idea of it. And ultimately the piece I made is all about desire. It doesn't even matter if the desire is for an object that exists object, person, anything. It's, it's just that the, the pure desire. Speaking of desire, what is your desire leading you to? What is the next uh, remoteness that you're seeking out in your work? Where um, will you be going? I'm actually leaving in uh, tomorrow to go to Indonesia to film inside of an active volcano. It's something I saw images of, uh, I don't know, four or five years ago, and they have just stuck in my brain. And for many reasons, it's it, there's sulfur mining happening inside the caldera of the volcano. And so visually, it has an otherworldly just beauty, you know, just stunning beauty with a, a brilliant turquoise sulfuric acid lake in the middle of the caldera. And then these fume, the sulfuric dioxide fumes that are billowing out, but look, you know, just gorgeous fog like images. And then these miners that are under the most extreme conditions imaginable. And, uh, you know, and it, it is horrific. It's a horrific job and it's extremely exploitive. And that flips back and forth between this horrible thing that's happening to humans and this incredible beauty. When the sulfur comes out, it's just like that gorgeous yellow that doesn't look real. So the miners will figure in your next piece. Yes, they will. As well as the incredible environment of the volcano. They all will, and I, uh, I, I hesitate to be too rigid in, in my thinking about this project. I really want to go there and experience it and imagine that I'll probably need to go back. I'm really excited to go. <laughs> listening to Art Talk with Janet Biggs. Read more about Janet's work and hear other podcasts in this series at freshartinternational.com.